On today's episode of Fatty's Feast, we are putting some of these cool toys I got from Grillaholics to the test by making stuffed bacon cheeseburgers on the Old Country Brazos Smoker. Let's get started. It's so cold. It's so freaking cold out here. And I don't know why I decided today was gonna be the day to come out here and do this video, but I'm doing it for you guys because I love you. Welcome in everyone, my name is Josh. Thank you so much for joining us today. If it's your first time here, glad to have you here. Hope you find some value in today's video. And if you're a returning subscriber from the Fatty Fam, I love you, how are you? First off, my apologies for taking that week off to get caught up with everything, just a lot going on in my personal life. But uh, I hope you enjoyed some of those comedy videos I put out. If not, sorry. You know, I'm just trying to make you guys laugh. But we're back out of the smoker. Um, I don't have a grill, okay? So I have to use the smoker as sort of like a, a replacement for a grill. But some of these toys that we're going to be testing today will do the job on either grill, smoker, griddle, whatever. It doesn't matter. Now, as I said in the unboxing video, some of these tools I will use, some I won't, and I can't put all of them to the test all at once. So we're going to do most of them today. Not all of them, but we'll see how it goes. So as you can see, I have not lit a fire. I haven't done anything because I want to give these grill brushes a test. Now, if you haven't checked out the unboxing video, please do before you watch this one because I sort of go into my first impressions and talk about all the cool things they sent me. But these were the grill brushes. Once again, there's three of them. So unfortunately, this thing isn't that dirty because I just reseasoned it. So we're going to do our best to try to put these to the test and scrape off the little bits that are still there. So first, let's try this plastic one. I have some gunk built up on this side. Oh, wow. Eh, not bad. It's actually getting pretty deep in there to get some of that stuff out. It actually takes less effort than I think with uh, this brush than it does my other brush. The bristles are holding up pretty well. They're not breaking or anything like that. Now remember, this is for cold use only. Cold smoker, cold grill, whatever. It worked pretty well. All right, still got some gunk in there, so let's try this steel brush, your typical steel brush. Now, as I said before, I'm not a huge fan of these because I'm scared the bristles will come off and get into my food. It's working pretty well. Let me bring this up this way because there's stuff on the bottom, too, we can get. Yeah, it's working pretty well, getting a lot of stuff off. Minimal effort, too. I think that these bristles actually moved a little more, obviously, than the plastic ones because the plastic's thicker. But there is some bending already with this. Last but not least, we have this one here. I'm not sure how this is going to work out with this particular... Yeah, that's, this, is, this isn't going to work on here, I don't think. Ah, it's actually getting some stuff off, surprisingly. Then we have the scraper. Oh, that works out pretty well, actually. I like that. Wow. That's cool. Yeah, it's getting a lot of stuff off, actually. Let me, let me put this back the way it was. Yeah, this doesn't work for this particular smoker, mostly because you have your grill grates that go this way, you know, lengthwise, and then you can get in between them with these things. So I have to find a real grill. But yeah, this thing, uh, this scraper works really well. I like that. So, cool. Very neat. Now, just for a comparison, this is my current grill brush that I use, which has the scraper. I like the scraper on the Grillaholics much better. Uh, it seems a little bit thicker and holds up better than this thin scraper on here. And it's disgusting, obviously, but the bristles have held up. It does the job. But I'm very curious about this one. I think I'm going to keep using this one. Obviously, the plastic bristles are the way to go, in my opinion. So if you have a smoker and you're looking for a good grill brush... This is probably the way to go. I'd recommend it. But I'll keep using it over time, obviously, and I'll let you know how it goes. All right, so I'm already dying. It's been 10 minutes, um, so this is going to go very well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a fire, and then we'll assemble the burgers in the kitchen where it's nice and warm and we can relax. And then we'll come back out here, use some grill mats, throw them on the smoker, and see how everything holds up. All right, we're back in the house where it's nice and warm. As you can see, I have on my Grillaholics hat. You couldn't see that outside because I'm all bundled up. But anyway, we got all of our stuff laid out here that we're going to be testing. The first thing I want to talk about is the thermometer. I'm actually using this to monitor the temps in the smoker right now. Seems to be working fine. Now, the batteries, the screws were very hard to get out. I don't know why. We almost stripped them, I thought. Um, but they were, they were in there pretty tight. A little weird. But if we take a closer look at this, um, as you can see, 
You have different settings you can use. So right now, that's the temperature of my smoker, 352. I have the timer mode on right now because I'm not cooking anything that I need to have an alarm for a certain temp. I will say though, for whatever reason, when this reached 190, an alarm went off. I, I don't know why. But you can switch modes just by pressing this button. If I do that, obviously it lights up. Any button you press will light it up. And now I am, <clears throat> excuse me, in taste mode, which means I can set what kind of meat I'm making, which is sort of neat. So if I want to do uh, chicken, we'll do chicken. So I need an internal temp of 165. I can also manually override it so I can set the temperature I want. Let's go back to chicken. And basically, it won't let me change it because chicken needs to be cooked to 165. But if I do beef, then I can change it medium rare. And as you can see, the temperature changes as we go along. But I'm not using that because I'm using the timer feature so I can just monitor my smoker temps. One weird thing is this thing keeps shutting off. It's not as um, responsive as I would say compared to my Thermaworks, which is obviously always monitoring and always on the move and going up and down. This one, I don't know if it's just trying to come up with a temperature reading and then it stops and then it shows it again. Um, but we're going to keep it out of the 500 range because we don't want to damage it. But so far, so good. Not, not too bad. It's 386. So as I said, we're making burgers. That means we need our burger press. I got about a pound of 80-20 right here. So if I put that in, I don't know how much I need. Sort of eyeball it, I guess. And then if we smash it down. What if I do this? I guess I need a little more. Okay, so I have my cavity there. Let me take some of the all-purpose salt, pepper, garlic. I'm just gonna throw a little bit on the inside. Gonna do some jalapenos. Nothing too fancy here. Gonna throw in some sharp cheddar, then a piece of American. Sort of in there, just like that. And if I remember correctly, we attach this back on. Then we'll throw this on top and then Flatten it out like this, I guess. Seems to be working okay. There is some cheese poking out. On the, what do you want? Jesus, man, I'm trying to film. Get out of the burger meat. So then if we take it out, we got this burger. Yeah, I, I don't know. This side right here, like that's that's poking out there. So, interesting. I never had issues like that with my other press. I'm just going to, oh yeah, wow. I'm just going to try to form it, put a little more here. Oh yeah, that's really not working out too well. My issue with stuffed burgers is they always seem to fall apart every time I make one, but we'll try that, I guess, best I can do. Let's try it again with the other one. I'm still looking at the temperature reading. It hasn't moved from 386. Sort of want to make it so that we have stuff coming up on all sides here which will hopefully seal it off a little better. That looks better. For this one, let me season it with this salt, pepper, garlic, butter on the inside a little bit. Put this top on and give it a press. This one seems to be working out a little bit better. Let's take it out. That looks better by a long shot. But once again, I have very bad luck with these things and it'll probably split open. So I'm just gonna try to push in the sides here. Okay, so this one's salt, pepper, garlic. This one is all purpose. Got a little left for just one more patty. So we'll throw that on. Okay, I'm gonna season this bad boy up with the salt, pepper, garlic. And I'll throw that on the regular burger as well. It looks like a lot of salt and garlic in here. Don't see much pepper. Oh, there's pepper. Just had to shake it up. Make sure we get all sides. And on this one, we do the salt, pepper, garlic, butter. Seasoning doesn't really want to stick, I've noticed. Definitely a different smell with the salt, pepper, garlic, butter. All right, let's push these off. I got some bacon that we're going to throw on our mesh grill pads. I got some carrots here that we're going to use the grill basket for. I'm just going to toss these in a little bit of oil because they said to do that. And I'm gonna put some salt, pepper, garlic, butter on this as well. 
So we're gonna be using this for the carrots and then our mesh grill pad for the bacon. And then I have a heavy duty one for the burgers. I'm assuming it's gonna perform the same way as the, uh, the regular ones, but because it's gonna be in the hot spot, I figured why not use the heavy duty one. I'm gonna throw the grill basket and the grill pads on just to get them preheated a little bit. And then when the smoker's up to temp, we'll throw on the food. All right, we're out here at the smoker. Uh, one thing to note with this thing, this is the transmitter for the wireless thermometer. I had to put my table up because it doesn't have a magnet on the back, which sort of sucks because I like having that magnet and keeping this table down. But it is what it is, it's working fine. We're pushing about 400 up top here, which means it's hotter at the bottom. Let's throw our food on. So one thing to note, I only have the mesh pad and the box. I couldn't fit all three, I didn't realize that. So we're gonna start with the carrots on here. Nice sizzle. And it does say to let that warm up. Then our bacon will throw here. Now one thing to note, this is very hot. My hands are burning because I'm so close to the fire. I'm just gonna space it out as much as I can. But I, I really, my hands are very uncomfortable right now. Look at that, it's great. Perfect. For this, I'm using a combination of whatever wood I have, which is a little bit of oak and mostly maple. So I'm assuming this is probably gonna take about a half an hour. We'll keep these temperatures pretty high and we'll let this go. Once the bacon is done, I'll remove that mesh grill mat, take the bacon off, and then we will throw the burgers onto the heavy duty grill mat. Let me just take a look at the fire here. These grill gloves are actually very nice. Keep my hands nice and warm. Throw another piece of oak right on here. I don't feel anything right here. Very nice. Let's throw two pieces. Get this fire nice and roaring. And the outside of this, yeah, these got these got warm. But they, they're working very well. I like these. Now, even though it is cold, the worst part about this whole experience is I can't even drink because I have to go to work tonight. I don't, I don't know what to do with myself. All right, I'm going to try to stay warm. We'll check back in a little bit. All right, it's been about 20, 25 minutes or so. The bacon's done. Let's take a look. Oh, looks so good. Nice crispy bacon. Now I'm using the Grillaholics tongs here, being careful not to damage the grill mat, which it seems pretty sturdy. One thing I noticed about these tongs, I wish they weren't, well, they're a little off. That's a little weird. Probably got bent during shipping, but I don't like the pointed ends. I'd rather it be like just flat like my other tongs that I have. So we'll get this off and placed in a bowl. And then I'll just take this grill mat off. Looks to have held up to the heat pretty well, a little dirty. And now we'll put our heavy duty grill mat on right here. Carrots look to be coming along pretty nicely. Let's take one out, try it. Not done yet. So we'll let those sit. I'm just gonna close this up for a little bit, let that warm up. One thing I did notice during the cooking process was the flame was coming out of the firebox and sort of going onto the grill mat. I hope it didn't damage it. It doesn't look like it did. I didn't smell like burning plastic or anything. So I don't know, we'll see. I mean, usually I have things over on the coolest part of the smoker because we're doing slow cooking, but in this case, we're doing fast cooking. All right, it's been a few minutes. Let's get these burgers on. So this is the AP seasoning. We'll put that here. It's pretty hot. I don't know why it's not sizzling weird put that one here that's the other AP and then this one's the buttered seasoning oh there we go I got a little bit of a sizzle the burgers are cold too so obviously one thing with stuffed burgers is we want to make sure all those ingredients in the middle are cooked that's why I said in my uh, unboxing video don't throw raw meat in there because it's not gonna cook thoroughly so we'll let these go probably like 10 or so minutes we'll flip them see what kind of grill marks we're getting if any and we'll start probing to see if uh, you know they're cooking in the center or not. I really hope they don't bust apart. All right, it's been about 15 minutes. Let's take a look at these burgers, and we're also going to take the carrots off. Got some pretty good color on them. Use my Grillaholic spatula here to flip them. Now notice not many grill marks or anything. This one's actually got to be about done. But you got some of that stuff that builds up from cooking and they're oozing out. I don't want to speak too soon, but they're not splitting open yet either. All right, so yeah, we're almost there. I will say though, pretty good color from the smoke. Somewhat of a sear, just it doesn't have like grill marks or anything like they advertise. Carrots are looking good, let's take these off. We'll give these about 10 more minutes. 
So I've never had a smoked burger before, so I'm very excited to try these. I'm not sure if using the regular grill mats would have made a better sear or anything, and it's just the way it is because it's heavy duty, but I really didn't want to use that smaller, less thick, thin, thinner, thinner is the word, grill mat because I didn't want it uh, to get damaged from the fire that could be coming out of the firebox, which you don't want during smoking, but it happens. Another thing to note is getting the fire started to do this whole experiment uh, was more of a pain than actually cooking the food. Everything was cooking pretty quickly. It was the fire that took forever to get up to temp. So I probably wouldn't do this um, normally to cook a burger, especially when I have my Blackstone griddle. So like I said, I'll let these go for about 10 more minutes. We'll bring them in and we'll form our burger patties inside where it's warm. This is so sad. I can't even do my walk-in with my beer. I have to drink a Coke Zero. Coke Zero, right? Yeah, Coke Zero. All right, let's construct our burger. So I've got two delicious toasted buns. Let's do some mustard, ketchup, mayonnaise right here. Spread that out. Gonna do a little nice bed of lettuce here. Let's throw some of this crispy bacon on. I'll do three pieces, because I'm fat. And then here are our burgers. This one looks like a hockey puck. It is what it is. This one is the all-purpose seasoning. This one's the plus butter. So I think I want to do the plus butter. Let's try that one. And I got some pickle. I'll throw right there. Typically, I would do onion, but I don't have any onion, so it is what it is. And I was too lazy to go to the supermarket. Look at this thing. Monstrosity. Let's cut her open and see what we got. Look at that. Nice and oozy and gooey on the inside. We have a small smoke ring. That looks really good. Oh, the jalapenos smell delectable. Check that out. Looks delicious. Throw my carrots down on here. All right, first let me try the carrots. A little cold because they've been sitting out for a bit, but never knew I'd like smoked carrots. What a surprise. Okay, this thing is falling apart on this other one here because of the bacon bed or whatever. I can't wait. I'm just going to bite into this thing. I don't stuff on my face, don't I? Now, I noticed... Hold on. <laughs> I noticed a lot of the cheese oozed out. Not a lot, but enough. But this is delicious. Let me try this other one, too. I'm not going to use a bun. And I'm not going to eat both of these. I am fat, but I just can't do it. Very good. As far as the seasoning goes, I definitely taste the garlic out of everything a little bit more. Could use more pepper. Uh, the salt's there too. You can taste the salt, but the pepper is definitely lacking, and that's probably because it, it's mixed in with everything and it might have fallen to the bottom. Who knows? But it, the seasonings are good. Overall, I'm very impressed with these products. I'm a little disappointed at the fact that we didn't get those grill marks like they advertise, um, but it is what it is. You still get the smoke flavor. I said I might not do this again, but I might actually smoke burgers more often because those are really good. And a little overdone, but you know, when you're working with stuffed burgers, it's tough because when you probe it, you're getting that internal temperature with that cheese. That's why they say like, don't probe fat because the fat's going to be warmer and give you an off temperature. Whereas the meat, I sort of had to go in and not go in as far as I would in the center. But I also, yeah, that, it's just a pain because you have that balance that you're trying to keep without overcooking the burger. So if you liked what you saw in today's video, please give us a thumbs up. Leave a comment on your thoughts if you use Grillaholics products. If you're interested in their products, I'll put a link in the description and in the comments that I'll have pinned at the top. And remember, most importantly, to use Fatties20 at checkout to get 20% off your entire purchase. That's Fatties, F-A-T-T-Y-S, 20, 20. I can foresee me definitely using these grill mats, especially the mesh one. If I want to do uh, something else on the smoker that I don't really want to have fall through, like bacon, that was delicious. The bacon in itself is so good. Standout smoke flavor on the bacon too. That's really good. But in conclusion, once again, I hope you did enjoy today's video. Until next time, everyone, stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy, stay warm if you're in New England, and stay tubby.